Welcome ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me again. Um, it seems the channel has taken uh, quite the uptick in views since lockdown. Um, we've just surpassed 500 subscribers. Uh, it's great that so many people are interested in this kind of thing. Um, I guess my advice uh, for any new channels is to not make any videos for five months and hope that there's a global pandemic. Right, on to today's topic. Um, if there is one comment I receive more than any other, um, it's about this animated background that you can see here. So I thought we'd talk about that a bit and uh, and fit in a bit of shell scripting and, uh, and maybe PID file management as we go. Um, so uh, TLDR, um, this is a video running uh, in MPV. Um, it's a video and not a GIF, although it looks very GIFy. Um, it's a video simply because um, using hardware decoding on my GPU is more CPU efficient than using a GIF, right? Um, MPV can be a bit of a monster when it comes to CPU usage if it's not configured correctly, not using the right decoder, the right file types and stuff. So how do we take a video and turn it into a background? Well, we use a program called xwinwrap. Uh, and what xwinwrap does uh, is create a window to our specification with you know the flags and stuff that we want. Um, and then parents another command to that window via the window ID. Um, in X, the window system is like a tree where you have the root window at the top and then you can create a window and then you can parent that to the root window and then parent another window to that window um, and so on. That's how window managers uh, add the, uh, the title bar and stuff. They make a window, draw onto that window all the windows surround, all the, the window chrome, and then they parent the application window onto that, offsetting it a little bit to account for the window frame. Okay, so let's pull up the script and have a look. Make the text bigger, because I always get in trouble for not making it big enough. Is that big enough? Is that big enough for you, animals? Right. Um, okay, so firstly, you'll notice this is a bash script, um, slash bin, slash bash. It has some bashisms in here. Um, so you can't just run it slash bin, slash sh, as you might normally. Um, I'm sure it could be written in pure um, POSIX shell, but uh, I'm a busy man, so there we go, it uses bashisms. Um, so let's first look at the functional stuff that this does, and we'll ignore the, the PID management stuff for a moment, we'll come back to that. So here, um, on line 7, um, we define a function called screen. Um, this is not necessary, it could be done in line. Um, but I, I like the separation, I like being able to understand things as, as, as uh, separated. Uh, it's called screen with an underscore at the start. The underscore is a fairly common naming convention in Bash and other languages, and it kind of just means that it's intended to be private to whatever container. In this case, it's the script, right? It's not intended to be used outside the script. Um, so let's have a look at this winwrap, xwinwrap command. You'll notice that there is a lonesome double dash here. Um, this is a fairly common way to say stop looking at command options and everything that follows this is a positional argument. That is an argument where its significance is determined by its position in the command, not by, you know, a, a, a dash letter or something. Um, so, okay, so in, in this case, basically it means everything after the double dash is the command that we want xwinwrap to embed. Um, so let's go through the options one by one really quickly. You can read the man page if you want more. Um, dash OV means over, override redirect. And this is basically what causes the window to act as a background. It tells the window manager to leave it alone. Um, don't don't treat it as a normal man uh, a normal window. That's often used for pop-ups and things like that. Um, so we'll set the geometry of the window and the window manager can basically just ignore it and just create it as a as a normal window, right? Um, dash ni um, means uh, ignore input. Um, it, without that, on tiling window managers, sometimes the backgrounds, the, the, the video can, can capture input, um, which we don't want because it messes with window focus and things like that. Uh, dash g here uh, means geometry. Um, so we're going to tell it exactly where to place the window. We do that with the first argument denoted here by uh, um, $1. Um, now remember that we're in a function, 
So dollar one refers to the first argument to the function, not the first argument to the script as it would normally. Okay, so now we're on to the MPV command. Um, I won't go through all of these, you can figure out what's best for your system. Um, but I will draw attention to this WID token here. Um, so the way that XWinRap is able to uh, parent um, things to other things is by using um, a window ID. Um, and it, it, what it does is when it runs this MPV command, it replaces the WID with the actual window ID that it's created. So we pass that into MPV like this, um, and then MPV knows you know where to where to embed itself and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then finally, um, we pass in dollar two here, which is the second thing to our screen command, which will be the the video to play or whatever the GIF, whatever you decide to use, um, and we background it. Okay, so skipping over the PID stuff for a moment, let's see how we call this function down here uh, on line twenty four. Um, so basically what we're doing here is looping over our monitors using X, R and R. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. We pipe the results from X, R and R dash Q, um, which just lists out your monitors um, and we'll grep out the connected lines with grep connected. Um, that's just which monitors you actually have plugged in, right? Um, and then we will grep out the geometry from that line. We can, we can see how that would look. Uh, I do x r and r dash q. So you can see here, uh, this is an example of a line. So we're pulling out the connected line, um, and then we're using uh, this grep, this reg, this uh, regex to pull out this. Basically, this is this is what we're getting from uh, from x r and r. Um, um, so dash o here in this grep that just means only print the match. So don't print the whole line as grep usually does. Just print the match. That's all we want. Um, and P, um, P means use Perl style regex, um, which means you, you can use slash D and all those kinds of things to refer to digits instead of square bracket, square bracket, numerical, close square brackets, close square bracket, right? It's just infinitely easier to use Perl style regex than it is to just use the standard um, grep regex. Um, if, you, if you look at the manual um, for grep and you look at the P thing, uh, the P argument, it will actually tell you that it's uh, experimental um, and not to be used um, even though it has been in their years. Um, so yeah, P Perl regex for the win. So then what it will do, what this loop will do is pull that um, that geometry into this I variable here and we run screen on I which is our geometry and we pass in $1 which is the first argument to the script because we're outside the function now which is the video that we want to run. So it just loops through our connected monitors and runs this with the geometry and the thing. Okay, so great. All right, so if all you care about is the uh, the pretty video background, you can you can stop here. Um, if you'd like to know a little bit about what the rest of this script is doing with the, the PID files and all that, then stick around. Okay, so now the normies are gone. Let's talk about the good stuff, the PID files, the scripting. Yes, let's go. So what is a... PID. Uh, PID stands for Process ID. Um, this is just a unique identifier that Linux gives each process as it starts. It assigns it when it starts, and it just does it numerically. So, if you start process three, the next one will be process four, and so on. Um, if we run, uh, if we run PS, we can you know see a load of these. These are all, these are all PIDs. And as you see, they, 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 some drop out as processes start and thingy, but they, they, they sort of go up and up and up and up. Um, you can also see them on top. Uh, here you go, these are these are the PIDs from top. And we always start at PID 1, um, which is the process 1. And that's kind of how Linux works, right? Pro processes fork processes and more processes, and they're all children of, of so on. So what do we use PIDs for? The most common use for a PID is to send signals to that process. There are myriad signals that you can send, but the most often one is the kill signal, right? We send um, send a signal to the process to tell it to kill itself. Um, so let's say we run our script on a video, um, like we're doing here, and then let's say I start having an affinity for My Little Pony and I want to have a My Little Pony background instead. If I then run my script on a different video 
It'll appear to have worked fine, but then I'll have two videos playing, and then, you know, I'll have My Little Pony at the front, and I'll have my Dark Souls-inspired background here at the back. Um, and if I've got four monitors, which I have currently, then that would be eight copies of MPV running, um, you know, and then another four every time I try a different video. That's not a good idea. So we need to we need to kill those processes that are already running. So one way you could do that, kind of the naive way, is to just do this: kill all x win wrap, right? And that would work perfectly fine. Um, but I kind of don't like that because x win wrap is a generic, um, a generic tool. It's like cat or grep, right? It does one specific thing. It doesn't show animated backgrounds. It does anything that you want to do if you want to embed another window into into a window, right? Um, so I don't like that, in the same way that you would never write something like kill all cat, right? That would make no sense because lots of things use cat. You don't want to you don't want to do that. Where it might be okay is for instance I'm running polybar at the moment. My bar at the top here is polybar. Uh, in my polybar script I do have kill all polybar because I know polybar is is high enough in the usage uh, tree, if you like, that I know I'm only going to have one polybar and it's going to be called by me. I have control over that program compared to xwinrap or cat or grep, which could be run anywhere for multiple reasons, right? So, long story short, we need to save the process IDs for this xwinrap uh, command. So, where can we do that? So, the place you do that is in a PID file, which is simply a, a text file with a number in it. Uh, or in our case, it can be multiple numbers. But generally speaking, uh, it's just got a number in it. Um, so, first let's say where we're going to put it, because that's kind of important. So, here up here I define a, a variable called PID file. Um, so, we use uh, slash var slash run slash user slash user ID. That's a bashism, by the way. That will fail in a shell script. Um, and then background.pid. It's it's fairly standard to call them top dot pid, but you know you don't have to. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So why do we put them here? This folder is specially designed for PID files because, as part of the spec, it must be cleared when the system starts up. Right. This is important because if it wasn't, we might have stale PIDs from a previous session, and then our script might just start killing random processes because it doesn't know. Right. That would be bad. Um, so this is where you put a PID file for users anyway, because this, this is you know by user you will have write access to this folder, whereas var run, which is where root can put theirs, uh, you don't have access to that uh, write access to that. Um, okay, so let's skip down to this loop here, which is where we're reading the PID file. Uh, what this loop does is it just uh, pipes that PID file into the loop, and then while read p, so it assigns each line the to the variable p. Um, and then we do a ps command ps dash p with a uh, with the with the pid dash o com equals and what that does is it outputs the name of the command the name of the uh, the, the executable that runs without the full path right or without the full uh, the 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 options and stuff afterwards um, so we check if that is equal to winwrap if it is we say and and which means means which means continue with the command if it's true. Uh, we kill dash nine. Dash nine is sig term, which means hard kill, terminate, uh, and we pass in the the, the process. Um, but hold on, why do we need to check the name? Because I said that we store the PID in a PID file and it's in a special folder. So why would we possibly need to check the name? Well, this is probably overkill, but it's a good teaching opportunity. So let's go with it. Basically. PIDs can be reused once the kernel runs out. So it would technically be possible for X winwrap to crash and then the process ID get reused again in the same session. How likely is this to happen? On a desktop system, I would say basically zero. Um, actually, you can, let's check, you can check uh, the, the maximum PID by catting out, uh, what is it, proxys? Kernel PID max. Okay, so on my system I have you know 4.2 million uh, PIDs before it will loop round. So and what what are we on at the moment? Like 29,000 kind of thingy. So it you know it's unlikely, um, but it might you know why not? 
Um, now, it's still... Okay, so now we're in the realms of the crazy, but it's still possible that the system might happen to reuse a PID, and it might happen to be an instance of X WinRap, which is unrelatable. Um, but to be the chances of that are basically zero, unless you have a desktop system which is dedicated entirely to running in instances of X WinRap. If that if that's your bag, then you'll have to change the script, I guess. Okay, so we have the PID file that is being correctly read. Um, and killing the correct processes as best as we can, as basically as much as we can do. All we need to do now is to save them. Um, so up here, we declare a new array. This is another bashism. Um, declare dash A means, you know, declare an array. The A stands for array. Um, and then here in the screen function, um, we add the PID of xwinwrap to the array. So what uh, dollar $bang means is that is the PID from the previous run command, the previous run process, right? Since we've just run xwinwrap, that is the PID for xwinwrap. Um, so that's what the PID is. We add that to our array, and then we come all the way down here to a print command, which basically just um, lists out the arrays and prints them with a new line after each one and whacks it in the PID file. Um, and that's it, and we're done. So who said Linux wasn't fun, right? So before I go, um, I'd like to mention that I started a podcast this week um, called Massive Drive. Um, it's kind of, uh, it, it's not an interview format, it's a, it's an audio essay format. They're about 10 minutes each, uh, and it's going to be a weekly show. Um, it's about entrepreneurship, um, business, and uh, self-improvement, productivity, that kind of thing. Um, a bit more, a bit more sort of commercially focused. Um, than the YouTube channel um, but I think you'll enjoy it if you like what's on this channel you'll probably enjoy it um, if, you'd, uh, if you'd like to have a listen you can go to massivedrive.podbean.com that'd be really great to see you all over there in the meantime if you could uh, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm I would appreciate it it helps me out more than you could know and of course please subscribe to the channel if you are not already um, and I'll see you uh, maybe in the next five months have a good day